Welcome to Laird Wellness Live for August 20, 2021. That's a lot of 20s. Scott Laird, Jody Laird. Hello, good evening. How are you doing? Well, we are, uh, it's just, since it's August 20th, we are nearing uh, school season. I guess many kids are starting back at school, whatever that looks like this year. And uh, we are um, going to be doing a lot more of this on Fridays since it is yeah. now the fall season and Absolutely. no longer summer. Back at it. Yep. Since everyone's come back on vacation, including us, <laughs> You're right. we were on vacation, had a lot of fun. It was our 25th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we took the kids, went to the beach, had That's some right. fun. Uh, got some surfboards and boogie boards, mm. rented that kind of stuff, and had a lot of fun. So, we did. Got to do that once every 25 years. So. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or once every we'll year. We'll be you know, 75 next time we do it. Oh, no, let's hope we do it before that. No, 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 let's hope we can do it. Yes, absolutely. So now we thought we'd talk about something uh, that a lot of folks um, don't know a lot about. Um, there's, there's some changing thinking. Or they on, think they know a lot about it. They think they know it. a lot about it, and they don't. There's some changing thinking on cholesterol. Mm -hmm. You know, like even today, like we still have uh, folks that we know who are on statins, good friends of ours. And, uh, you know, these folks are in the medical community, and they didn't know that statin, you know, that we looked, they're, they're taking a statin mm -hmm. because their doctor told them that, uh, you know, they need cholesterol is high, need to, need to get it down. And then uh, they became part of our biologic blueprint program and saw that their their cholesterol was too low, like dangerously low. Right. And you could say dangerously low. I thought cholesterol is supposed to be low. Well, that's what we used to think too. You know, we were vegans and we tried to get our cholesterol as low as possible because that was the key to getting the best rate on, you know, life insurance and things like True. that. True. That's what they want to see. They go, oh yeah, green check mark. You're your uh, LDL is in the basement. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk all about LDL, HDL, all those type of things with someone that I think knows more about cholesterol than most people in the world, and I'm being right. completely serious, and that is Dr. Tom Lewis. Uh, this is the guy who runs our blood tests for us for our biologic blueprint program. He looks at all types of markers like vitamin D, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, of course, some of those markers are what we would consider to be cholesterol markers. Right. What you're going to learn tonight is those are not Cholesterol markers. They're not cholesterol. Your total cholesterol doesn't even have any cholesterol. <laughs> That's one thing that shocked me. I just interviewed Tom uh, a little, a few days ago, and we're going to play pieces of that interview for you. Uh, and the, 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 I think the most shocking thing to me was, this is something I didn't even know, even after wow. knowing Tom for so long, right. is that, is that uh, your total cholesterol, the reading they give you when you get your blood testing, they say, here's your total cholesterol. He says, there's actually no cholesterol in there. What? <laughs> How does that work? I thought LDL, HDL, total cholesterol, VLDL, all those type of things. Nope. Hmm. So you're going to learn some things tonight, as I did a few days ago, because this is really interesting stuff. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, so if you'd it's like me... so new that I don't even think I know about No, it. this is crazy. You've right. got to listen to it. It's nuts. Uh, so anyway, um, we are starting a new Biologic Blueprint group by the way so we have one person interested we got more people interested more people are making their 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 appointments so what we want you to do is make your appointment uh we want you to go to the biologic blueprint uh uh sign up page not sign up page just to, to find out more about it and so what you do is you go here you go to lairdwellness.com slash blueprint and what you do is you go to that site and then you can book a half an hour consult with me and we can just talk it through see if it's right for you right. maybe it is maybe it isn't no harm done just a good talk between you and me doesn't cost you anything. So uh, we encourage you to do that just to see if it's right for you. Because some people, you know, at the end of the phone call, they're in tears going, how come I didn't do this before? Right. I didn't, you know, and, and we, we talk it through and why are you doing this? You know, why, why do you want to change? And then we really drill down to why people want to change. Is it for you and your health? Yeah, that's always the answer. Well, why do you want to be healthy? Well, and we get deeper and deeper into it. And, and it could be like, because I wanted to take care of my mother in her old age. <laughs> it ends up True. being something like that. You know, it's, it's just, and then it really hits people like, wow, being healthy is not really for me. It's for something else. So why don't you discover what that something else is? Talk to me. Let's at least discover that so you know right. why you want to be healthy. You know, that, that's an amazing discovery. Right. All right. So we have five pieces of information we want to give you from uh, Dr. Tom Lewis. Uh, each one of these is about two or three minutes long. And uh, these are some amazing things that, uh, I, again, you're just going to be blown away. Uh, the first thing I asked Dr. Tom is, what is cholesterol? Because, you know, that's, if, it's, if, it, if cholesterol is not what we think it is, what is it? So I wanted to get a clear understanding of what it was so that we could, you know, talk further about it and help educate you about it. 
Right. So here is Dr. Tom talking about what cholesterol is and what it is not. Take a look. Well, so I'm a medical data scientist. I have a doctor from MIT, and then I went to the Harvard School of Public Health, studied toxicology and nutrition in the public interest. And so actually, Harvard teaches us an awful lot about the cholesterol molecule, but no one's talking about it. Let me give you an example. I would argue that almost no one, or maybe even no one, knows what their actual cholesterol level is in their body. But before I go into that, I thought I'd just drop that bomb to start with. Even though you think you do, you know your total cholesterol, which is irrelevant really. But see, the cholesterol molecule itself is one of the most important substances or molecules in all of human physiology. According to Harvard in a publication they put out to the public and internally in 2005, cholesterol is one of the most important substances because it is a building block for the membranes of all cells in the human body, all cells in the human body and in, and in mammals in general. And it's not just there for structure, it's there for function. It helps regulate what goes into and out of cells. So that's a very important one-two punch. It's part of the membranes and it controls how the membranes function. Of course, you've got to get nutrients in and out of your cells to live well, okay? And the third part of this is the cholesterol molecule itself is a building block to all the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, uh, cortisol, the one that wakes you up and puts you back to sleep, and even vitamin D, critical to our immune system, is a derivative of cholesterol. So you have to start with cholesterol and your liver will build the vitamin D molecule. So that's how critical cholesterol is to the body. All right, so there you go. Uh, interesting stuff, isn't it? That we actually need cholesterol. Right. You know, and uh, Dr. Tom talks about how there's, you know, there's fat soluble nutrients. And we talk about that too with our clients. So there's A, D, E, and K, the vitamins. A, D, E, and K, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. All of these are what they call fat soluble nutrients. And what that means is that, uh, you know, the body is basically water-based, and these are oil-based. And of course, water and oil don't mix, right? So what do you do with that? So that's why you need to have something that, uh, that basically Transport. transfers, yeah, transfers the oil uh, around the body. And so that's what cholesterol does. It's sort of the, uh, the taxi. You'll hear him later talk about uh, the taxi that takes you from the airport and takes you around. And so uh, my... Uh, addition to that analogy of his, is that if we don't have enough cholesterol, it's like having a flat tire on that taxi. We can't get around to where we're supposed to go. So you could be taking vitamin D like crazy and nothing's happening to your vitamin D level because you don't have the taxi to take it around. You need cholesterol. Or you're taking statins. Mm -hmm. And it totally lowers, lowers your vitamin it. D level because you can't get it through the system. Right. It doesn't necessarily lower your cholesterol. It lowers the LDL. Now, what is LDL? What is HDL? What is total cholesterol? This is something Tom's going to get into just in our next question here. And uh, long story short, you know, one brings nutrients to your cell. The other one takes nutrients from your cell. So as you can imagine, if one is much higher than the other, you know, for example, if the, the first one, I mean, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, you're going to learn in a second. The first one comes to your cell and keeps pushing things into your cell, but you don't have enough to take it out. What's going to happen to the cell? Hmm. It's going to get jammed up with a bunch of stuff, oh, yeah. right? You're going to have like, your cells are not going to be efficient. So it's almost like um, filling water into a tub. So you've got to have a good tap and you have to have a good drain, okay. right? So if you have a drain that won't, that won't go down and you keep filling the tub, Ooh, it, right? Yeah. It fills up with everything. On the flip side, if you're trying to fill the tub with something and no the, 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 the plug does or the plug doesn't work, okay. then it just keeps going down the drain. So you've got to have this good flow, this good even flow. So that's why the levels of LDL and HDL actually matter, but it's probably not in the way that you think. So I'm going to play the next video here, and forgive me, they're they're a little small. I'm going to have to. <laughs> You'll see them expand here. Uh, a little something I forgot to do before we went on. But regardless, it doesn't matter. It's, the video is still there. So here is the next question from Dr. Tom. I asked him about what is 
total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, explain this to us. Your total cholesterol number does not have cholesterol in it. Total cholesterol is an aggregate of three things, three things added together. Your LDL, which is low density lipoprotein, no cholesterol in that, plus your HDL, high density lipoprotein, no cholesterol in that name. And the last part of the equation to calculate your total cholesterol is 20% of your triglyceride numbers, which is a measure of how much sugar you're taking in or very readily available, easily digestible carbohydrates. So in there, there is no cholesterol. But LDL, low density lipoprotein, is soap. What does soap do? You have a greasy dish. You wash it with water. It's still greasy. You add soap. It removes the grease. But that grease is being carried through water and down your drain. Your vascular system, your bloodstream is water-based. But fats are extremely important. We know there are fats and we know there are water-soluble things in our body. To carry the fats to tissue that needs it, like the vascular disease where your tissue is burning up and you need to bring something like cholesterol to repair it, LDL, low-density lipoprotein, the exact same structure as soap, your, your liquid detergent, your laundry detergent, doesn't make any difference, it's all soap, carries fat-soluble things that would otherwise not be able to be carried through the bloodstream. Think about salad dressing, the oil and the water separate. You don't want that happening in your bloodstream, throw soap in there and it'll become one homogeneous mix. That's what's going on in your bloodstream. And all HDL right. is the exact same thing except LDL carries fats to your tissue and HDL carries any excess that your tissue doesn't need at this moment back to the liver for either discarded, be, to be discarded or to be recycled. So there you go. There are the functions of LDL, HDL. And I love the analogy he gives of soap. Right. Uh, in fact, I remember Tom telling me that uh, he did a search online to see if anybody else does that. You know, you know, cholesterol, soap, just kind of did a Google search. Nobody's talking about it like that. But it makes total sense. It's like, the, the, you know, these things ride along the soap uh, and get around the body. Just like he said, like it's like, you know, the old uh, Dawn detergent commercials. Yes. You know, you pour, pour Dawn and then the, the grease jump just kind of goes away because that's what it does. It just, it right. creates this separation between oil or this, uh, this way for the oil to make its way through the water and, and down the drain, right? So it makes complete sense. So that's how it works. So LDL takes things to the cell and then HDL takes things away from the cell. And the way, the why I'm doing this up and down kind of thing with my hands is because um, that's the way I explain it to clients when I'm talking to them. Uh, like for example, when I'm with Dr. Aaron Ernst, when I'm teaching them uh, nutritional things. And I tell them it's like an airplane. Think of LDL, low density lipoprotein. So L, like a plane coming in low. So like landing. a landing plane, like a landing plane. And then HDL, high density protein, uh, lipoproteins, is taking things high, taking them high out of the way. So at landing and going out high. So that's how you can remember which one is which. Now, of course, uh, do our numbers matter? You know, we always say that, okay, well, you've got to have more HDL. Well, okay, that makes sense, right? Because if there's too much LDL, it's like that analogy we talked about before. Too much coming in, not enough going out. Right. So, well, how much is enough? Right. Right. So it's sort of like, well, some people talk about ratios, like, oh, it's, it should be like half. Uh, I know some folks, some, some practitioners say that LDL, or pardon me, HDL should be half of your total cholesterol. And uh, as Dr. Tom uh, explained that total cholesterol is not even that it's it's like LDL HDL and then you know twenty percent of your of your triglycerides right so it's like it's like not even not even cholesterol where does that come from anyway so he says it's not about a ratio it's about having a specific number and he's going to talk about that next and also um, so that number will determine whether you have enough anti-inflammatory fats now that term shocked me as a former vegan right because we were always told yeah. that. And the anti-inflammatories were the, were the compounds in vegetables and fruits. Right. We never talked about fat. Right. 
You know, and so that's why when people talk to us about uh, ketogenic diets and that kind of thing, which we have tried and we, we go on and off of that, and or I go on and off of it, you're more consistent on it. but Mostly. Um, but anyway, so a ketogenic diet, no, don't think Atkins when you think keto. I mean, a, a ketogenic is, you know, when you do it cleanly, which is the only way we, re we recommend, Absolutely. is doing healthy fats, healthy foods, none of this eating pork rinds at midnight garbage with cream with cheese. Cream cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not don't what we're that. talking about. That's dirty keto. It we works. don't touch dirty keto. You probably will lose weight, but... You'll probably lose a lot, of, a lot of the rest of it, too, a lot of health along with your weight. Anyway, so... When you're doing ketogenic diet, there are a lot of anti-inflammatory fats. So the fats are actually anti-inflammatory. And that makes a lot of sense it because does. what are you replacing when you're you know, putting more fat in your diet? Well, what you're typically doing with a ketogenic diet is you're trying to get all those simple carbs, the breads, the sugars, all of those uh, addiction type foods out of, your, out of your diet. And you're trying to replace them with fats because fats have nine grams, oh, pardon me, nine uh, calories per gram. And protein and fats each have four calories per gram. Protein and carbs. Thank you. Protein and carbs. So the, you can see that fats will satiate you for a lot longer because they have more than twice the amount of calories. Right. And that's a good thing because then you won't eat as often. Because when you eat often, you keep your insulin levels up. Mm -hmm. And when you keep your insulin levels up, you keep your sugars up. When you keep your sugars up, you keep inflammation up. Absolutely. This is why switching to a more fat-based diet is anti-inflammatory. Who would ever think we'd like, been saying that 20 years ago? I know. This didn't make, but you know what? Science changes. You know, we have to admit that, hey, you know, we thought we were right. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that's, and sometimes it's all you have, right? So like, for example, technology way back when, you know, they did what they could with what they had, right? So what they did at that time with what they had was good. That's all they had. That's all they knew. Right. So when we went vegan 15 years ago, we didn't have access to grass-fed meats, you know, organic uh, eggs. Well, I guess it may have been organic eggs, but maybe. I or, mean, but organic foods were really expensive back then because nobody there, there wasn't the volume to bring the price down, right? And because there wasn't a nobody lot was of doing it either. It. There was right. maybe a lettuce head here or there. Romaine lettuce could be organic right. here or there, and that was because about it. Be between the regulations and the cost mm -hmm. of doing it, not a lot of farmers were doing it. It was all just kind of like the old granola people you know man all the hippies they were doing their the they were growing thing. their own too they were growing their own but they were <laughs> yeah. the only ones that would dare put the expense into doing an organic farm because it was a big layout at that point right. and now they're winning because everything's going organic right and so th now we know these things so when we went or, uh, vegan that's why you went vegan because there weren't a lot of healthy animal-based foods and all of the research at that time was saying animal-based foods are killing people right it's causing colon cancer, this kind of cancer, 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 diabetes, heart disease, everybody went, ah, let me go to the vegetables. And so that's what they did. You ran to the vegetables. And we did. And we did. And now you look back at it and some people go, nope, meat causes cancer. And even me, who's both, both my parents had colon cancer. Okay. I understand where I'm coming from. That puts a target on my back. Right. I have a genetic predisposition to colon cancer, obviously. But even I'm going, huh, wait a minute. That research was done with conventionally raised meat. It didn't say so in the, in the studies necessarily, but you know it did. Mixed with a whole lot of white potatoes, well, white Well, sure, flour, yeah. So, well, it depends on the study, but yeah, sure. No, but I mean, a lot of the flour in the past 20, 30 years has not been right. brown flour. It's exactly. been the white. So now even I'm changing my mind, going, well, wait a minute, that research was based on that information that they had at that time. This is a different time. There's better foods now, believe it or not, if you got to know where to look. So now, do those dangers still really exist? I don't know. Anyway, we've only got about 10 minutes left. We got, we're not even going to make it through all of the, uh, the questions here from Dr. Tom. But let's play this next one when I asked him, do our numbers really matter? So here is Dr. Tom. Well, it's really important. And first of all, the treatment that you get to lower your cholesterol doesn't lower cholesterol. It lowers your liver's ability to produce LDL. And LDL is transporting important fats to your tissue. So it's reducing that. And some of those fats, vitamin D, vitamin A, uh, marine uh, fatty acids that are important to brain health, any number of, of different things. So how I look at the so-called lipid panel, which looks at 
cholesterol, but it's cholesterol now we know that, is to see if you have a proper balance in fat transport, okay? Are you sufficient in healthy fats? And healthy fats are extraordinarily anti-inflammatory. And most diseases of aging are inflammatory in nature. So I think you'd wanna have a molecule like LDL that's bringing anti-inflammatory substances to tissue inflamed or on fire. So how I look at the lipid panel is I look at your LDL and I look at your HDL and that ratio, but not necessarily just the ratio, but the actual absolute values. I really don't care what your LDL value is. I'm really looking at HDL. And if HDL is high, say 50 or above, what it tells me is you are bringing through your LDL enough fats from your digestion of, of good food to your tissue, to your cells, to keep them happy. And when, so you have enough that HDL needs to be present to carry the excess back. So you're in a sufficiency domain. But below 50, what it's really telling me is your cells are starving for these anti-inflammatory molecules. You're insufficient, either because you're on a drug that's lowering your LDL, that carries them there, or you have enough of an inflammatory process going on that your body is needing much, much more than someone who's in a much healthier state. So you have to bring more fats to this scenario. So I can have two people with an LDL of 150. One has an HDL of 80, and one has an HDL of 30. The one with the 30, it's because they are using all the fats in their body and there's very little to be brought back. They are in an inflammatory state. The one with a 70 or 80, they're sufficient. They're just using some, but they have plenty of excess. They're, the fire is already under control or, or snuffed out. So that's no issue. So we call the HDL the good cholesterol. But it is, there's no cholesterol there. There might be a little cholesterol in the HDL, but there's all kinds of other fats in there as well. So, but it is true that as HDL goes up, it tells you that you kind of have things under control. But as LDL goes up, it's not a bad thing, but it's telling you that there's a lot of inflammation or irritation or literally a fire burning inside your body that it's trying to put out once again. LDL is the fire truck showing up to the fire. The water is the vitamin A, the vitamin D, the cholesterol, the triglycerides, whatever else the cells are insufficient of or in need based on your disease profile. So that's really the story. But I must reiterate, total cholesterol, the number you get is LDL, which is just a carrier for fats. Cholesterol is one fat. No one's measuring how much cholesterol is in an LDL particle. HDL is the one, another high density lipoprotein that brings the fats back. Once again, there may be cholesterol in there or there may not be. And then the last value in the calculation for total cholesterol is 20% of your triglycerides. So if your triglycerides are 100, you add 20 to your total cholesterol score to get that number. But once again, total cholesterol Nobody knows what their cholesterol number is in there. Nobody. I've called, you know, Boston Heart Labs, Cleveland Heart Labs, the big names, looked at LabCorp, looked at Quest. Does anybody calculate your free actual cholesterol molecule? The answer is no. The closest one is Boston Heart Labs that does a so-called sterol test, which is sort of a surrogate for cholesterol. But I would argue except for a few microbiologists that know how to test it, nobody on this planet knows what, what their cholesterol value is. Nobody. Okay, so there you go. You don't really know your total cholesterol. Makes sense. Nobody knows what the real cholesterol level is. It's interesting that he said that LDL can go up and it's not a bad thing. But HDL, if it goes down, is a bad thing. So, and, and if HDL is up a little bit, that shows that things are under control. I've never heard it explained that way, and I really appreciated what he said. That's why I wanted to share it with you. Yeah. We're going to go over a little bit of time here. We've only got about five minutes left, but that's okay. We're going to, we're going to go a little bit past. 
Uh, when we're done, we do encourage you to go to Shabbat Night Live. It's a really cool episode. We'll tell you about it in a minute. But anyway, so um, does knowing our free cholesterol number matter? That's the next thing I asked. Right. Does it really matter? And um, you know, what are we missing here by not being able to know that number? Because as Tom said, no one's measuring it. I mean, he called everybody. So uh, here is the uh, answer that he had to that question. Cholesterol makes up every single membrane of every single cell in the human body. So like in cancer, the tumor is ripping tissue apart. And at the molecular level, it's ripping, or microscopic level, it's ripping cells apart. So if you have cancer, I would argue that your free cholesterol number would go up. We don't have access to that number. The closest we can get to this as something as a surrogate for it is something like VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. But even that is still not the cholesterol molecule. So I, I say that we have, since 1987, when statin drugs were introduced to lower cholesterol, really lowering LDL, they've grossed a half a trillion dollars to lower cholesterol. But not one person, not one doctor, knows what the number is for what they're lowering. They use LDL, but LDL, I mean, vitamin A, retinoic acid, extremely important for the eye, retinoic acid, the retina. LDL carries vitamin A. If you don't have LDL, you are not transporting a fat-soluble vitamin like vitamin A. Vitamin D, fat-soluble. Vitamin E, vitamin K, all these very important things. So, so, so someone it, could have a low- I, I would love to know. I was gonna say, so, so someone could have a low vitamin D level because they don't have enough cholesterol, is that right? No, no, because they, they've been, They've been treated with a drug that doesn't impact cholesterol. It imports the transportation of cholesterol among other fat-soluble substances. So like you go to the airport to pick up a taxi cab to go home, it doesn't differentiate between creed, color, you know, gender, age. It picks you up. LDL is the same way. If you're a fat that can't float through your water-based bloodstream, LDL picks you up. So, you know, how much is that LDL carrying in terms of cholesterol? No one knows, you know, because it has all these other things in it as well. So obviously Dr. Tom knows a lot about this type of stuff yes, and he, uh, he is working on something now. Uh, we don't even know fully what it, what it is, but it's something to do with cholesterol and it's, it's very, very, very big. And important. And important. And it is going to affect everyone's life in America. So uh, get ready for that. He is using his brain for your power. So yes. <laughs> get ready for that. All right. So the last question we have here from Dr. Tom is just a, a practical one. Uh, if you have a pen and paper, uh, go get it. Uh, if you just want to take some notes on your, on your phone, I encourage you to do so. We're going to tell you how to raise your HDL with food. This is probably the most important part of the uh, of the conversation that I had with him. Obviously, I uh, know fried food, uh, but it's it's interesting the things that he says that you should be eating to raise your HDL, which is an extremely important thing. So let's get to this final question from Dr. Tom. If your body needs healthy fats transported to tissue, your LDL will go up accordingly. And so, yeah, if you're not as healthy, the LDL might go up higher than someone who's healthy. But I'm really worried about sufficiency. And so that's why I've totally focused, and I think everybody should just totally focus in on their HDL level, not even the ratio. A lot of folks think it's a ratio. It's the absolute number, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, something like that for your HDL. And you want it to, at minimum, be 50. How do you do that? You make sure that you are consuming and maybe even more importantly, absorbing well, because you are not what you eat, you are what you absorb, absorbing, absorbing healthy fats, avocados, fats from nuts, particularly in my opinion, fats from fish, because fish really truly is brain food. So if your HDL is low, 
you are using all the fats that your body wants, and maybe you're even insufficient in those fats. So you can tend towards a little bit of a ketogenic diet. I'm not a fan of any particular diet style, but really just the idea is to increase the intake of healthy fats in your life. So it can be plant-based, but most of the plant-based are not omega-3 in nature, and the brain is really dependent on that. So you really have to have a balance of omega-6 and omega-3s. Look at it generally as plants are more, more omega-6 in composition, whereas marine products, fish are more omega-3, the meats will be a little bit more in diversity. Things like a walnut as a, from a plant, seed will have more, um, and nuts will have more omega-3 than say a pecan. Uh, peanuts have very low omega-3, but they do have healthy fats in them. So it, it's all about creating that balance. All of them will raise your HDL, but really you should endeavor to raise your HDL, making sure you're getting marine fats. And if you're afraid to eat fish, take krill oil, take cod liver oil, something like that. Grass-fed products, especially harvested in the spring, um, when the grass sprigs are really loud, Light green have a lot more omega-3 fatty acids in them. So eating grass-fed meat that have been out to pasture, you know, is a, is a good thing to do as well. So my, my main things are, if you're afraid of mercury in the fish, go earlier in the food chain, sardines. Um, I do salmon, it's not too bad. Oysters are very high in nutrient density. Avocado, chia seeds, Flax seeds, hemp seeds are all good. Lots of the nuts, staying away, being more cognizant of the omega-6, omega-3 ratio. My favorites are macadamia, pistachio, um, walnuts, pecans. Those kind of go to the top of my list of healthy nuts. And nuts are loaded with fat, up to 80% fat. Grass-fed butter, um, cooked with MCT oil, olive oil, no canola oil no vegetable oil, none of these refined oils, soybean oils. Avoid restaurants of any type with fried food because they're all in the GMO soybean oils, which are pro-inflammatory. And guess what? You've now taken in an oil, but your LDL is gonna go up. And then your doctor is gonna get all paranoid. Hey, your LDL's up. Because you created inflammation and then your body's trying to throw in the anti-inflammatory to that fire, the non-GMO, uh, healthy fats. All right. So there's your grocery list. Go shop and go get yourself some healthy fats. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all those things in our house. We love those things. All and, my faves. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, and if you're thinking, oh, I don't know about some of those things, you know what, you'll, you get used to them and, and pretty soon you crave them. Uh, just like, you know, I crave greens now, you know, I never used to crave well, and greens. And what do we and, say when we uh, have a meal? Think fat first. Exactly. Yeah. Think fats first. And when you have a meal, look at your plate and go, what kind of fat can I add to this? That's how you know you'll always have some good fats there. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tidbit here for a little bit of a, a little, sh a little bit, yeah, a little, what? I'm just saying. Secret? Yes. <laughs> a little secret. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's not even out yet. There will be a website next week, and this has to do with, if you are watching and you're a fan of Michael Rood and you love the events that Michael Rood does, we are doing Yom Terua. It is an online free event. So, you know, it's not in a hotel or anything. It's going to be online. It's free. September 10th and 11th. Mark your calendar. Look for the website next week. Go to rudeawakening.tv and you will see all of this next week. It's not even ready yet, but I'm going to give you a sneak uh, bit of information. So, uh, we are going to have some guest speakers. Some very controversial guest speakers. We are talking about Yom Teruah, what's happening in the world. Right. Okay, we are talking about things that we cannot talk about here. Okay, this is why it is only going to be streaming. It is only going to be on the michaelrood.tv app. Those are the only two places. That's it. Right. If you want to record it, you cannot. If you want to get a copy of it, you will be able to get a DVD and Blu-ray and pass it around privately to your friends. This is the important, uh, very sensitive information we're going to be sharing at Yom Teruah. Right. Yom Teruah is a call to worship, a call to war, for God's people. That's exactly what this is. Now, speaking of serious subjects, 
go over to Shabbat Night Live right now because you can see a show called Satan, the Ancient Enemy. Ooh. Yeah, this is all about Satan's rule over the world over the last how many thousands of years and where it's all leading and where where it's leading is quite surprising. It is leading to uh, what everyone's talking about. The mix yeah. between people and machines. Mm. Real. Yeah, like real. Like this is where it's heading. And, and so you just got to watch tonight. Uh, it's on right now. Uh, so go over to ShabbatNightLive.com. I believe I have the, oh, there we have. Go right there. ShabbatNightLive.com. Go over there. Uh, watch the show. It's amazing. This is the uh, the second of four episodes. It just keeps getting better and better and better. You're going to be amazed. Uh, and actually, uh, this month, the uh, the love gift for mm -hmm. A Rude Awakening is actually uh, the same guy, uh, Dr. Douglas Hamp, who wrote the, the book all about all this. So, nice. yeah, interesting stuff. So, anyway, we uh, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time on Layered Wellness Live. And until then, have a good week. Take care.